I'm Tini, and we're Brew to You NJ. We are food scientists with a passion for home growing. We've been doing it for the past eight years, and we love teaching it to people like you. So, we just started this YouTube channel recently. What are we going to be doing on here? Well, we're going to be uh, doing some home brewing instruction. We're going to be talking about different things involving home brewing. And we're also going to be doing craft beer tastings. And that's what we're doing today, is the craft beer tasting. The story behind the beers that we're going to be tasting today well, here in New Jersey, I was at Costco recently, and uh, not all the Costco's here sell alcohol. Right. Right. But I was at the one closer to my work, and they do sell alcohol. So I took a little perusal through the Costco aisle, the alcohol aisle, and this one caught my attention. So most of them were, you know, standard mass-produced lagers, you know, the Coronas and stuff like that. And then they had one another side that was all uh, craft beers, um, including some local ones, which okay. was surprising. Um, but the one on the end cap, which for those that don't know, is the cap on the end pile, um, <laughs> had this this one. It was a it was a mixture of German beers, four different German beers from two different breweries. I, I love German beers, so I decided to pick it up, and that's what we're going to be sampling today. So the two breweries are a brewery in East Germany called Kostritzer. And they are near Leipzig, Germany, and they make one of my favorite beers of all time. It's their Schwarz beer. Why don't you tell them what the Schwarz beer is? Oh, I forgot. I can't, I can't do that. <laughs> we never said we knew a lot about brewing. We just said we There's a it. lot of beers. <laughs> a Look in the comments below. It will have a description. <laughs> A Schwarz beer is basically a dark lager. So it is, it is a... Um, the lager equivalent of like a porter. So it is a lager, it uses lager yeast, but it also uses some roasted malt. Um, and it gives it a very caramelly sweet upfront profile. Um, that's pretty much unlike any other beer that, that is out there. It's, it's completely different from a porter. It tastes completely different. Um, so it has a cleaner taste. It has a cleaner taste. It's because lagered. Because it's lagered, right. It's lagered, it's, it's, it's fermented at a colder temperature. Uh, but it also has that those deep caramel notes that you get from that roasted malt. So, okay. that. so that's really cool. And then it also has a coasters or pale ale, which I didn't even know they make. So that's that's pretty awesome. We're going to be tasting that. And is that from Germany that they make it there? Yes, these are both made in near Leipzig, Germany. Okay. Um, at a town called I think it's called like Kost or Ritzer. And it's with one of the two. Kost Ritzer. <laughs> but it's right near Leipzig. Um, the other brewery, which is was in this variety pack, which is pretty um, unique. It's called Bitburger. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, Bitburger is nowhere near Kostritz. So Bitburger is actually from Western Germany, right by the border with Luxembourg. Mm. And here, there is a premium Pilsner, and they also have a Rattler. Why don't you tell them what a Rattler is? So traditionally, a Rattler is a mixture of a lager style beer, a light lager, with a, a citrus-based uh, soda. So in this case, this is a lemon soda. Uh, in other parts of Germany, like in Munich, you can find Rattlers made with grapefruit juice or orange soda. So, um, and, if you, and if you're interested. only familiar with American beers, it's very similar to what a Shandy is over here. Yeah. So Shandy is a more of like an American or English type of name for beer that's similar to what a Rattler is in Germany. So we're gonna be tasting these um, and uh, you're gonna be coming along with us on this journey. And it's cold, so I don't know if I can get my Yeah, my it's about 40 degrees right now. So I am keeping the beers to me. I know what this one tastes like. So as you can see, it's deep, almost like a Coca-Cola type of color. Shall we uh, get a good aroma for this one? Good aroma, yeah. Mm. Roasty. Let me tell you the first time I had a Schwartz beer. I was out in Rockford, Illinois at a German restaurant called the Raskeller. Yeah. And there, they had the seating in the basement and we were down there and it was dark. It seemed kind of dingy, but one of the things that, one of the beers they had on tap was a Schwartz beer. I don't even remember what brand it was or anything like that. And this was before I even started home brewing. So yeah. I'd never heard of a Schwarz beer, Schwarz beer before. And I tried it and I fell in love with it. And uh, that's when I started looking for good Schwarz beers. 
Mm. Nice roasty character. And clean taste too. Yeah. Um, I, I ha also have noticed, you know, Schwarzbier is not a beer that's, um, it's not popular, at least since, since I've been visiting um, craft breweries. Uh, but I've noticed it a lot more in uh, the craft breweries in the past, let's say a year or so, have been okay. coming out with a lot more Schwartz beers, which is interesting because uh, it's a really good style. It's, it's not, it's dark and it's completely different from like Porter's stuff. So. Yeah, it's not as thick as a Porter. It's got a uh, pretty nice carbonation as well. I just said that, that fizzle like on the tongue. I mean, it looks like Coca-Cola. It does. <laughs> like you could, you, this could pass for Coke. If you yeah. <laughs> Put this in a can or in a, in a, in a cooler, and nobody would notice. <laughs> so, if you're ever at your local liquor store, and you see a variety of beer, that, and it's just Farts beer, and you never heard of it before, well, now you have. So, pick it up and try it. Not it's all of them are great, but, um, you know, you can find some in the imports of the German section. Um, some of the local uh, breweries around here uh, have made some mm. uh, seasonally. It's usually like a late year type of seasonal option because it's uh, it's dark beer. Dark beer is usually drink winter time, yeah. fall winter time. Yeah. It's cold right now, so it's actually quite refreshing. <laughs> and cold. And then I have this handy dandy water here to uh, cleanse our glasses with. Nice. Push it around and then since we're outdoors. Hey. hey. All right, what's next? Next we have the Kostritzer Pale Ale. As I mentioned before, I did not know they made this. And Pale Ale's not typical, like a German style. It's more of like an English. The English probably. So why don't you tell them the difference between the ale and the lager? Yeah, so you guys, if you don't, uh, if you know the difference between a pale, or actually between a lager and an ale, uh, ales are usually fermented at a, a warmer temperature than lagers, right? Lagers, typical lagers are fermented around 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas ales are fermented around 65 to 70. So they're a little bit easier to, to make a home. Yep. Shorter um, fermentation time. Shorter fermentation time. So from basically, from the time you make it to the time you drink it, you can have it as quick as two to three weeks, whereas lagers, you know, the lagering will take a lot more time because it requires the lower temperatures to ferment. And then lagering, uh, which is the holding of the beer at the colder temperatures to clear out the beer, make them crystal clear and clean tasting. Yeah. But most of the German style beers and the Czech style beers and the Eastern European style beers, they're mostly lager style beers, I think. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Except a few occasions yes <laughs> so this is a pale ale nice nice uh, amber, amber color. yeah you can smell the hop like a citrusy type of hop profile and there's like a an orange citrus profile but not too strong i will say i Pale Ale is probably my, one of my least favorite styles that I like. Um, a lot of the American Pale Ales that I taste are very, very like um, non-complex, like basic, like just tops, like there's no real malt or, or yeast character to them. Um, so what do you think about this one? I get a nice uh, upfront sweetness before the hops kick in. Yes, so definitely. I, so I think for me, this is a complex beer because I get that that complexity of the sweetness and then the bitterness from the hops follows it. I don't, I'm not as sensitive to like different types of hops are used with different blends of hops, but just in terms of like the, 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 the roller coaster that happened in my mouth from sweetness to either sourness or bitterness or like, this is a very complex beer. Yeah. It's, it's almost like uh, biting into an orange rind. Um, it has that sweetness from like the orange juice profile, but then you get some of the bitterness from the peel, but then also get the citrus oils uh, that you get from the hops that 
flavor of this beer. So it actually makes this pale ale quite, uh, quite good. Yeah, it, it, the fact that the bitterness comes after, you get that sweet hit, and the bitterness comes after that, kind of cleanses your palate. If it was a ver- reverse, you'd have like an aftertaste. That but the interesting flavors. thing about this one, it's made by a German beer company. Mm-hmm. And German beer companies based in Germany don't typically make pale ales. Correct. So for them to execute a beer like this, to be maybe on par with some American style pale ales, mm-hmm. it's a pretty good job. Yeah, I agree. So I doubt it. Mm. Next. Hey. hey. All right, so this is a Bitburger Premium Pilsner. Premium. Premium. Um, So I'm actually familiar with the Pilsner because I actually just made a Pilsner a few weeks ago. Yeah, so Tinny, he's got the whole setup at home where he can make um, lagering. He can do lagering. Yes. Um, Me, not so much. Hopefully one day. If you're starting as a home brewer, make ales because they're the easiest and require less equipment. And, um, you can, and you can sample them faster. Right. Or Pilsners, or Hefeweizens, or Munich style Helles, you know, these lager style beers, you need a little bit more equipment um, and a little bit more experience, I think. Uh, so I actually made a Pilsner uh, recently. It turned out really well. Uh, actually, the one you're talking about is a Munich Helles. Oh, sorry. The Munich Helles turned the out The Munich really Helles turned out really well. Yes. The Pilsner is right now lagering. Actually, it's. No, I take that back. It's starting its diacetyl rest. So a diacetyl rest is um, a period uh, a little bit after fermentation where you bring up the temperature of the beer so that any of the diacetyl compounds, which are these buttery aroma compounds in the beer, can be consumed by the yeast. So it takes about two to three days for the diacetyl rest to complete. What temperature do you use? Uh, about 65 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's, that's the time when uh, the yeast can uh, consume the diacetyl. The diacetyl is actually produced by the yeast during fermentation. And so that's what cleans up the beer uh, so that you don't get any of these butter notes uh, in the beer. Um, and then once you finish the diacetyl rest, you can uh, package them, you can uh, put them in your bottles or in a keg, and then you can continue with the lagering process, uh, which, you know, you, you bring the temperature back down uh, to help clear out the beer for you know, four to six weeks. But anyway, let's let's dive into this one. So how about in the comments below, you all put what your favorite style of beer is or your favorite brand or type. Love to see what you put down there. While he's pouring, if you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button at the bottom there and smash that little bell like you would a can of like your favorite IPA. And the like button too. Wow, it's really clear. Yeah, I can see the camera through the glass. It's got a nice pale straw yellow color. Silky head as well. Yeah, it's all, if it weren't for the big bubbles in here, it almost looks nitrate. Yeah. Uh, small bubbles. Yeah. It's got a little sweetness to it. Not too bitter. Not bitter. Very clean. Very like. I get some yeast notes at the back end. Yeah. Like a yeasty mustiness, but not like mushrooms or anything like that. Yeah, the first taste for me is like super clean i don't get much uh, strong hops strong yeast but the aftertaste for me there's a nice like a yeast profile there's a a nice reserved bitterness as well which is typical of a pilsner but it's not overly sweet it's not overly bitter no it's actually Um, easy drinking yeah very crushable that's where crushable crushable. (laughs) very crushable Yeah, there's no, 
You know, if they used hops, I mean, there's no hop aromas or flavors in it. No. Um, nothing distinguishable, no fruitiness, which is totally outside of this, this beer style. But it's really clear. Of course, it's commercial beer, so it's clear. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would... I don't know if this is something I would buy on a... On a regular basis. On a regular basis. It seems to... Uh, as produced to... It's like too similar to like a lot of other. Well, it doesn't have any distinguishing like flavors. Like it's kind of like, to each their own. It's clean. It's there's no like off notes or anything like that. There's no. I I drink it. It's just not something I'm going my way to get. I think it's more like um, you know if you're just drinking it on its own, it's probably something that you wouldn't drink basis but um, if you're having it with a meal right like like a steak dinner you know um, it would probably go nice with some like roasted meats or something like that you know with roasted meats there's a lot of these burnt notes and some umami and maybe the pilsners can help you know balance uh, the whole meal wow it's really cool <laughs> <laughs> the sun is starting to go down so yeah. Last beer. Go. So this last one is a Bitburger Radler Natural, uh, brewed in Bitburg, Germany. Let's have a taste. Thank you. Smells like lemons. So the color is slightly straw. Yeah, it's straw, but not fully clear. Yeah, it's definitely a haze to it. But not too much haze. You still can see kind of through it, but it's 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 got some opaque opacity to it. It's a it is a what's the word? Translucent. Slightly translucent. It's got a nice lemon aroma to it. Not too chemical or artificial smelling. That's really sweet. It's very sweet. Like lemon soda. Yeah. The, the thing with this beer is because I think it's, I think the beer base is similar to this. I don't get a lot of beer profile from this yeah. this Rattler. It's mostly that lemon soda that just kind of overpowers. It's not a it's not a super strong lemon soda. It's, it's really good, it's sweet, um, but there's no. I don't really get much beer component to this. Yeah. So this beer, this Rattler has forty percent of the Bitburger Premium Pills, yep. and has sixty percent of lemonade. So, I mean, this beer is great for the summertime. Oh yeah, super refreshing. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's a season, it's definitely a seasonal beer. Um, you know, if you come in from mowing the lawn or doing something outside and you're hot, this is a very refreshing option for you if you don't want to go for uh, heavy. a yeah. heavy beer or something that's non-alcoholic. Yeah, it's only 1.9% ABV, so definitely it's something like you drink a lot of but in the yeah. summertime you know yeah. just to, to chill in the poolside or you know out in the sun uh, this is as i said before you know with beer gardens across the country as well as in germany you know this is what they typically drink uh they drink liters of this uh <laughs> mixtures of you know of pilsner with lemonade or even uh grapefruit uh, soda yep yeah, the the Rattler um, that I've had the most is from a different part of Germany. No, it's actually from Austria. I'm sorry, mm. and they use grapefruit soda as their uh, what they cut their beer with. So you can find, but it's but it is almost always citrus fruits, right? Yeah, Rattlers are pretty much citrus fruits, uh, lemonades, sodas like 
grapefruit soda or lemon soda or whatever. Um, and it always has a citrus base to it. So if it's, you know, there's plenty of plenty of other beers that use other fruits or fruit extracts in them, but those aren't Rattlers. Or Shandies, as we say them here. Shandy. <laughs> Which sounds Irish. So if you're liking this program and you want to see more, again, hit that subscribe button and the little bell. And uh, yeah, we'll be making more of these videos in the near future. So um, we'll do some, as I mentioned earlier, we'll do some home brewing instruction. We'll be posting some, uh, some brewing 101s that Tingy has done with uh, some presentations that he's done. Um, and uh, we actually have a session coming up soon with, uh, with some customers. Yeah, we might video some of that and uh, put it up here. So and uh, we'll be doing more of these soon. So thank you for watching. Yeah, thanks. Take See care. you soon.